Guys, I thought I'd go through because I don't think I've done this before. Um, I think I've told you guys that I had a real hard time learning to meditate. And this was after I died. Well, before I died, I had tried to medicate for med, medicate, m meditate for decades. And I've done all of the things that they told you to do and tried all of the guided meditations in a candle. And I don't know what all, but all this stuff that meditation books had said. And none of it worked. My brain just would not be quiet. I just could not get it to shut up. So I don't know if I've explained to you guys how I finally got there. But I thought I would do a video explaining it because it might help some people. And I'm not saying that this is the way that all people should meditate. I'm not saying that even most people should meditate or learn to meditate this way. I am just telling you that this is how I finally did it. And a lot of the times after I died and the stuff that I finally figured out, a lot of times it was just um, me not quitting. I just would not quit. And I just kept going and kept going until it got done. I just got very, very, very stubborn with myself. And I think that that came from the life that I've had. It took um, a lot of tenacity or stubbornness to survive it and come out kind of a halfway decent person, which I think I am. And I was. So I think that kind of leaks over into this area as well. So a lot of times with me to get me to do something, I've got to be pretty tough on me. <laughs> All right. So basically what I did was I went after I died and I had all of this information in my head, and I knew I had it, but I couldn't access it, and it was getting really jumbled up with my human mind rambling on and on and on at 100 miles an hour. Then that made it even worse, and I knew that I wanted to access that information, and I knew instinctually the only way that I was ever going to be able to get to it was to shut my brain off. Just My human mind had to be quiet. I remembered that when I right whenever I died and got went out of body, it was in that moment of going out of body that I didn't have my human mind rambling anymore, and I immediately recognized that. I re immediately recognized that difference in me being out of body, and that it was a huge relief. Part of the relief about being dead was not having that human mind talking over itself and fast and fast and fast worrying and wondering and planning and and considering and all of this at the same time and i know that was a big relief so in order to get back to that accessing that information or that experience i knew that a big part of that would be shutting that mind off which i interpreted as meditation which is indeed what it ended up being so, how do I get to that meditation? I knew that after I died, I had all of this information that I could access. I knew that I could go and remember and experience where I had been that was so wonderful if I could just shut off my brain. But I also knew that I had tried to meditate for decades unsuccessfully. So already I'm, I'm, I'm at a quandary here where what I want is so, so, so important, but I also knew that I had tried so hard for so long and been as unsuccessful to get where I needed to go in order to get where I wanted to be, okay? So, basically, I went on the internet and I started all over again. And what, and I really had to look at what I was doing. And what I was doing is I was thinking about everything that was going in on in my life. I was thinking about everything that had ever happened in my life that could be triggered by anything I, I saw, heard, or I myself thought about. Okay. So this is what I had to stop doing. So I tried to do, I tried to go back in and do the things that they had said, the, the guided meditation and the guided meditation didn't work for me because number one, I don't visualize well, I don't see, I don't see things the way human eyes see things. I see things vibrationally. And so I never could create the picture that they wanted me to with my eyes shut. And then that would get me worried about, well, why can't I? 
How do I get there? And I was so caught up in how to visualize that I couldn't relax into the meditation. So I had to rule out the guided meditations. Then I went to, I think, the the mantra type things, you know, where there was a short sentence. So I would do those meditations, but even with those, I would start thinking about the words. And I would build on the words or start wondering about the words or wondering about the, how the person came up with those words and what exactly does the, do those words mean. And still, again, my mind was racing and racing. So I said, okay, I can't have anything with any kind of words. Okay, got that. So no guided med- meditation, no words at all. So now I'm into, all right, what can I do at this point? So no, I'm not doing those. Those, neither one of those work, check, check. So now I went into, let's try something else. Well, I really like all of the colors, you know, those bright colors with the designs that look like kaleidoscopes, the old kaleidoscopes toy that I had whenever I was a kid, only they were bright and they moved all the time. And I loved those with music behind them, but tried music that had words that were meaningful words. Again, my mind would start racing on the trying to sing with them or who made them or I'd really like to meet them or what did they actually mean by these words, that whole thing. So couldn't do songs with words. So I went to uh, meditative type music that had the bright colors. So I did that, first of all, in the daytime. And I had a big flat screen TV and I had the headphones just like they said to. This was on YouTube. And I would put the headphones on, and this would be during the day. And during the day, I would do watch, have the music on with no words, and I would have the bright colors, all the shapes that came and went, and I would watch them come and go. But what I found out was I couldn't keep myself focused on the, the TV. I would start looking at things to the side and up around. I'd look at things in the house that would make my mind start to think again. Like, okay, what time is it? When do I have to go to work? Um, uh, Oh, I need to fix that. Oh, that that picture is crooked. But you see what I'm saying? My mind would pick up these things again on the things around the pictures. But I did notice that the bright lights in the kaleidoscope colors, they did hold my attention. So the next thing I did was I closed down the room and I made it dark, made the room dark. So I couldn't see anything. And then I pushed a chair really up close to the flat screen TV and and held my head straight in line with it, just straight in line. And I focused on that picture. Wouldn't let my eyes wander. And when I, and it took me some time, of course, to get myself to do that, to look straight ahead, to not let my eyes wander. But when I did that in the dark room with those bright lights and kept my eyes focused, I found myself realizing that my mind was slowing down. It was slowing down a lot. And there were even times when I could honestly say that I wasn't thinking anything. Okay, so I kept doing that over and over and over. I mean, days after days after days, weeks after weeks after weeks. Finally got so that every single time I could do that and I could stay in this non thinking state for long periods of time for 15 20 minutes where I wasn't thinking anything at all but at that point at 15 or 20 minutes my eyes would start to be droopy and I would want to go to sleep so I was fighting sleep now I went okay on to the next step because although I wasn't thinking I wasn't my mind was still full of that light and the music so I needed to get room with my non-thinking mind to access the information and the experience that I had had when I died. So the next thing I did was I went to the, into that non-thinking state with my eyes closed, and then I closed my eyes. Well, immediately my mind started to talk again. So I had to figure out a way to keep my mind shut off. So how I did that after much trial and error was that I did deep breath in, deep breath out, And I just did one and two. I did not count one, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't do that because that made my mind think. Where am I? Did I miss one? Am I I going too fast? Again, my mind would start ramping. So I simply did deep breath in, 
deep breath out, one and two. And I would say it one, like one in my mind. One. So the whole time that I was breathing in, I was saying just the word one. And when I was breathing out, I was saying the whole time two, which kept my mind from doing anything else. So it wasn't quiet, but it was only doing one and two. And that took weeks to keep myself from wondering, am I breathing deep enough? Is that the same as it was last time? So to keep my mind from thinking of all of those different things, I repeatedly just did over and over again. I do have the uh, brain entrainment music on whenever I was doing this and counting one and two. So I got, after weeks of doing that, I got so that my mind wouldn't do anything else but the one and the two in the breathing with my eyes closed with that music. Now, the way I found the music was I'd pull up YouTube. I'd try to find something that was longer, like 45 minutes, an hour, or up. And then I would click on it with my eyes closed with the headphones on, and I would just go with my instinct. Does this feel good? Does this feel right? If it did, I would begin doing what I'm telling you I'm doing. And if it didn't, I would click on to the next one. After I did the first one, because this took hours and hours every day, I would do this. If I wasn't working, I was working on meditating every single day for months. Okay. Then after I got, so I was at the one and two stage. Now the only thing left to do was to lose the one and the two. So I started doing just deep breathing and not saying the one and the two. So I would do it first. I would, I would start it out with the bright lights, close my eyes, and then I would go from there to the breathing one and two, and then I would stop the one and two. And I would stop it until my mind started thinking again. Then I would immediately start with the one and the two again until I knew that I had gotten it under control. Then I would stop with the one and the two when my mind was still, and then I would keep doing that. Eventually, after weeks of that, because I think this whole process took about three or four months to do it. Then after I got to that point, now I was to the point where I could sit down in front of the flat screen TV in a dark room, watch the bright colors, close my eyes, go to the one and two, lose the one and two, and have my mind so it wasn't thinking anything at all, as I was breathing comfortably, so I had a kind of a blank open state, sl- slate at this point. Now, when I did that, there was such a feeling of relaxation and bliss that I, I've, I've heard this term, blissed out. And I think I blissed out because there was just no pressure, no worries, no anything. It was just nothingness in a wonderful, wonderful way. So I did this for several weeks and it got so that that's all I was doing. I was doing, um, I would eat very little. I would come home. I would, you know, take care of my ADLs and I would go into this meditative state until bedtime. Then I'd go to sleep, do it all over again. And in my off days, aside from things that I had to do, I would do that very quickly. And then I would do the meditation thing again. But then I realized, and as as things always happen for me, as I get a message, I was watching something to do with meditation, and I heard this um, story about this woman who basically got addicted, like to alcohol or coffee or drugs or what work or whatever, to that meditative state. And I went, "Uh oh, that's that's what I've done." I don't want that. That's not what my goal is here. My goal is to access all that information that I had when I died and to go back to where I went whenever I died. So I came back out of it, did everything that I was going to to do. Now I practiced just being able to put on the headphones and close my eyes and go right into that not thinking meditative state. And I practiced that until I could do that every time. Then I practiced trying to do that with my eyes open until I could get that done. And then when that was done, I I did 
meditative state without the headphones, without the music, just to be able to go into the meditative state at any time for as long as I want to shut my mind off. And what that led to was that led to my mind just stopped ramping during the day, all day long, like it had all my whole life, which made my life much, much easier, that alone. Okay. Now, once I was to that state, then I quickly realized that I could follow my instincts much easier than I had had that I had, than I had before, which means that things started to flow easier in my life. Okay, now, but that doesn't get me to what my end goal was. My end goal was to access the information that I knew was there, that was coming in in between everything, in a way that I could understand it, sort it out, explain it to others, write it down. So now my mind is, is clear. I can do it at any time. Now I go back into it with the headphones and the music just because I liked it that way. And then I started simply asking questions one at a time. First, it was yes, no questions. Then it was more complex questions until I got used to how I answered me, how, how that was, that those questions were answered. And that I just started doing all the time. And I just kept asking more and more and more questions, building on the answers that I had asked for, adding as it went. Then very quickly, I started adding great big chunks of information at a time. And that's how I taught myself to meditate. So hopefully that will help people. Uh, hopefully it doesn't scare off people. Um, I was pretty stubborn about letting go of, of that stuff in my mind. I was a big school person. I love to learn. I love school. I love thinking. I loved um, organization. I loved um, um, working things out, scientific method, that sort of thing. So it was really um, difficult for me to let go of that and let go of it and go with my instinct instead, because that was exactly opposite of what I had learned in school and what I had learned in my religious upbringing. So it took a while, but it is so, so, so worth it. So, and it is absolutely imperative to go to 5D because your mind will just get in the way so that you cannot follow your instincts and your instincts is what will get you to 5D. All right. Well, hopefully that will help people. I hope. And, uh, yeah, that's it on this one. Uh, I'll talk to y'all soon. Huge hugs. Love you so, so, so much. Bye now.